Hello, Darren. Hi, Darren. You all right? Yeah, I'm all right. Today on Brentwood Tuxedo, I would like to talk about the uh, once un unknown, but now minor cult singer-songwriter from the 1950s, Connie Converse, and hopefully okay. introduce some new people to her music and, and have us talk a little bit about her story. But yeah. first, yeah. may I ask, what have you been doing this week? Um, well, for the past couple of weeks, I've been doing a Domestica course um, about editorial illustration. Domestica is a Spanish online learning course that specialises in art courses. And... Um, it's been really good. I've really enjoyed it, and uh, I've done some good stuff from it. So what, they're uh, giving you tutorials? Yes, the tutorials. It was all about um, the use of colour and composition in editorial illustration. Uh, but it also talks about um, how to start doing editorial illustration, which basically... It, illustrating a piece of writing um and the the tutor sort of takes you through all the steps he does from reading the piece and making notes and uh i, I find it really really valuable it's what i needed so yeah it's been really good really enjoyed this is it sort of um in some ways like are you doing it for the fun of it or would you like to start doing that sort of work I, I think I would like to start doing it, although I am doing it also just for the learning. I enjoy yeah. learning new things. Um, so it's, um, if I never do it, if I never get any jobs at all in editorial illustration, any commissions, I won't mind because it's already informed uh, my own personal arts. So it's been valuable. It's been well worth the, the money which wasn't a lot. Of course, that's what I'm supposed to be doing, actually. What I'm supposed to be doing is editorial illustration. That's what my degree was in. My degree was in illustration. Right, yeah. Well, music gets in the way, doesn't it? With, with a lot of artists. I just, didn't, I just didn't want to do it. Um, I quite enjoyed the course. But when they started doing things like, oh, right, and this is what you have to do, and you have to take your portfolio around, and you'll get a lot, lot of knockbacks. And when an editor says they have to change this, then you have to change that. And they just, yeah, they, they put me off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the course just, yeah. Just dissuaded me from it being. And, and afterwards, I, I think I went around once with a friend, went into London, and you'd go to these, uh, certain magazines and publishing houses would have days where you just dropped off your portfolio and you had to go and for a cup of coffee for a couple of hours and then you just go and pick it up. That's how they used to do it. Right. And, yeah. And, and I don't know, it just sort of made me kind of furious. <laughs> I was just sort of like, I'm an artist. I don't give a <laughs> shit. With, which is sort of, I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's a joke and we often joke about, um, you know, Tony Hancock and the rebel and stuff. But, yeah. you know, I actually also think those things as well. I just sort, of, yeah. just sort of think them a little bit. I sort of, it's not that I think I'm better than anyone else. It's just that like, I don't know, life's a bit too short for people to tell me what to draw, you know. Well, this is why the, the rebel's so painful for a lot of artists to watch because it's... Uh, it's all it's true. too close, yeah. yeah. What have you been up to? Um... I uh, I was very, very close. In fact, I'd considered that I'd made my mind up that I uh, had was going to give up um, my allotment. Right. It was yeah. uh, really uh, great during uh, lockdown. It yeah. was really great during lockdown, actually. That winter lockdown... And it wasn't even so much the growing growing of things. It was the um, building of things. I love building raised beds and drilling things and, and getting the whole thing set up. 
um, and in a way, sort of the sort of um, it's just really unfair growing things. <laughs> it's just really right. unfair. Yeah, just because it just doesn't work, and just things just <laughs> grow on, <laughs> die on you. <laughs> and no matter how much you follow all the instructions, you know, some things just die. And like you put the carrots in the same place you did the year before. Yeah. And they just don't, they work one year and they don't the next. And it's just randomness and, and luck. And I think the way you actually succeed at it is by doing absolutely tons of things and covering your whole allotment. Anyway, that's not that's not the, what I'm really getting to talking. I w- went there on Sunday with the the real intention of um, giving up, and then my friend Trish just did did not take no for an answer. Frog marched me over to the shop, brought like <sighs> seed potatoes and seeds for tomatoes. Okay. Didn't let me pay for them, and I said, "Well, why are you paying for them?" She said, "Because if I buy them, you'll you'll be guilted into keeping them alive and doing it." If you buy them, you're not being able to give up. And she, yeah, she just did not take no for an answer. And she said, right, come up to the allotment, pick that up, weed that, we're planting these. And I, ju- I just was not given a choice. So does she um, have an allotment there as well, or is she just a friend? No, she just had me. Yes, yeah, so of course she does, yes. yes. She, she, she is my allotment friend. Right, so and, uh, no, I think it's like she to, might have been a friend from other other parts of your life. No, 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 no. She's a allotment friend, and um, and yeah, we enjoy sometimes having it having a cheeky allotment fag, uh, right up there. Because for some reason, it doesn't feel like it's bad for you when you're on an allotment. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, well, I've just I've just I've just planted some potatoes. So how can this cigarette be bad for me? <laughs> <laughs> so you still got the allotment then well, it looks like that way yeah uh, we shall see interesting How do you, you I mean, ever go on Sarah I thought do, 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 do you must like you having the allotments and like you being around oh I think she does yeah I think she uh, yeah. I think she uh, uh, it's it's like a lot of things in life, it's another arena where men can be very men-like. And there's a lot of fighting and squabbling down there. And, uh, <laughs> men can be very boy-like, childlike. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, no, I'd, call, I'd, 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 I'd say a difference in this case. I would say this, this is a lot of the problem there is actually men rather than boys. Right. Yeah. I know what you're saying. Um, had you ever heard before I mentioned it the other day of mm. the singer songwriter Connie Converse? Never, completely new name to me. What a name, right? Yes, yes, it's informing what I'm drawing, but yeah, what a name. Um, here's another name for you, here's another brilliant name for you, right? Tegan Christmas. Egan Christmas. Tegan Christmas. Tegan Christmas. Oh, Tegan you've Christmas. mentioned Tegan Christmas before to me. Tegan Christmas is my friend. And yeah. about, about three days ago, she said, uh, have you heard of uh, Connie Converse? <laughs> so the, the uh, excellently named Tegan tells you about the excellently named Connie. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I listened to this song. And sometimes you, this a couple of years ago when I first heard the roaches and I was just like, how do I not know this? Right. Like it's so absolutely me. Right. That I'm sort of cross with everyone for not telling me. <laughs> you know, like I'm, um, Maybe they um, assume that you won't know already. Well, I think this is the sort of thing that really should have been on my radar. It's the sort of story I like. Um, and when I was listening to it, I thought, especially with the name, and it has a certain lo-fi quality, I thought I was listening to some hipster. 
uh, recent artist who was doing something quite arch. Not that I minded. I say that, and that sounds like a negative thing. I wouldn't have minded if it had been made in uh, 2022. I would still yeah. love it because it was yeah. so obviously my thing. But then I discovered that she, some of these recordings go back to uh, 19, I think so, one of them was 1954, but she was writing songs and she was in Greenwich Village in New York, uh, writing and performing these songs in the early to mid to late 50s, in the 50s, I should say. But I'm just, what I'm trying to emphasize is how early this was. Yes, yeah. To the extent that what I've, I, 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 I'm always wary of people saying the first or the earliest, but to the extent that some people are making claims that she is one of the first or earliest singer songwriters, because right. you know the idea of a singer songwriter wasn't really that common before then. You know, you had songwriters who wrote things, but you know, the fifties is kind of just as pop music's being invented it isn't you know yeah it's um still a lot of standards and a lot of uh brill building early brill building stuff isn't it when does brill building start uh i, I bet it's very early well mm. actually it's probably early 60s isn't it right yeah I, i'm see. i'm thinking it's before that even possibly um she's great She's amazing. Right. She, um, and it, and the, the reason why I say that I thought it was modern, I mean, cause I, I don't even like that idea really that I'm saying because it could seem so contemporary that that in itself is, uh, a virtue. Cause I don't think it necessarily is, you know, I don't think to sound modern or current is, is, is necessarily a virtue, but no, more no. that she has a, kind of songwriting language which i think took other people decades to come across yeah she's making jokes within she's making jokes about internal rhyme patterns she's 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 constantly winking to the audience about what a song is and what she is as a songwriter right and it's heartbreaking and funny and I can't think of anything that early that's like that, you know. Yeah. Not even sort of, you know, um, I don't know, Noel Coward or something, you know, which even then right. I think yeah, isn't, yeah. isn't that early. Um, what was the, that first song you heard then? What was it? The first song is this song called Talking Like You, Two Tall Mountains, right. which has several amazing yeah. lyrics. Uh, on I've that tree, that. A, 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 a sort of squirrel thing. Um, it sounds just like when we were quarrelling. The idea of making you seeing a squirrel thing and quarrelling, I think, is a piece of genius. Yeah. And she has such an interesting um, turn of phrase. The whole song itself, you, you initially assume that the song is about being alone and it being sorrowful, but actually the song is uh, I'm better off without you. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, and in one bit she sings, I don't stand in the need of company. Which is once yeah. again, a lovely sort of homely kind of way of putting it. Mm. And so uh, she um, remains almost entirely undiscovered in her lifetime. Um, uh, she has one television appearance and that's it. Right. And, uh, we're lucky, uh, we're in debt to, um, Jean Deitch, uh, an animator for recording some of her songs, um, in a, in his kitchen. Right. And, and, and that's all we've got, really. We've got a few. Yeah, I've, heard, I've listened to the album. You can hear him asking her about the songs. Yeah, and actually, like... uh, 
and actually a lot of that stuff on on the the the, 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 the main album you get is um uh, so sad so lovely yeah and that came out in oh, i don't know 2009 and right. um but actually they are there are there is a little more than what's on the album because i today found a radio show which I'll will link below, which is really good. It's an hour and has quite a lot of songs, but it also has um, he also interviewed her. So even though we have very right. little, we only have about I don't know twenty something like that, seventeen twenty songs or something. Um, we do have her talking about some of it because he asks right. her about a songwriting and stuff. Mm. But because it's pop music in its infancy. She hasn't really got much to say. She's just saying, oh, I don't know. I just make them up. You know? right. <laughs> Which is yeah, also, yeah, yeah. in a way, you know, <laughs> all any songwriter can really say. Yes. <laughs> yeah. What comes first? Well, the musical well, words. Oh, I don't know. I, I just make them up. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So she doesn't get uh, discovered until uh, this guy goes on a radio show in 2004 ostensibly to talk about his animation work and he brings right. these real to ruin says look you've got to hear this person you've got to hear this sir uh. and so she's been yeah been discovered in the uh the noughties that's amazing that so it was what was he called? And he said Sean Diet. He's a football G manager. Gene Gene Diet. D I E T C H. Right. Okay. Could be Deech, couldn't it? Yeah, Deech. Yeah, could anyway, be. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. but they, so he's held onto these tapes all that time, and yeah. goes into a radio studio to talk about his animation, but he still like obviously believes in the music, doesn't he? That he after all yeah, those years, I wonder whether he didn't. just thought. I mean, I wonder whether he's tried other times. I wonder whether he, you know, I mean, it's. It, it, I don't. I don't know that he hasn't tried lots of times over the years to no, get her known. Uh, she also has a. Uh, well, she has two brothers. She has an older brother and a younger brother, but her younger brother also is is someone who is uh, quoted on and talked about. You know, when you're trying to find out things about her, but he himself is no slouch. He is some kind of award-winning scientist who studies political thinking. In fact, his wiki page right. is longer than hers. So, so this got me thinking. Actually, I, I, I didn't. I've, I deliberately didn't look her up. I knew you were going to be talking about her, but yeah. listening to the music, and um, she's obviously very intelligent. So, and saying that about her brother. Was she from a fairly well-to-do family then? They were a Baptist family. They were quite religious. Right. Um, and I think that sort of feeds into what's happening in some of the songs and feeds into what, well, she becomes quite down and morose. Um, the radio show. I don't know. I think it's a little bit fanciful. The radio show likes to make it that, you know, she becomes down because of the lack of success of her songs. I think that's a little fanciful because there's a long time where she stops writing songs. There's about 20 years where she right. stops writing. Uh, no, that's not right, is it? No, about 15 years where she stops writing songs before the next part of the story happens. Right. Um, her father died not hearing a song of hers so the narrative i've read in a few places is that um that she started drinking and smoking when she was in new york and relatively she had um you know a, a little bit of what what baptist parents might think a, a wild life Yes, and some yeah. of the songs sort of sort of allude to that. There's a song called um, uh, "Roving Woman," where she's talking yeah. about what you're supposed to think about a roving woman, and what a great term, right? I mean, yes, yeah. What do we, you know? And I think that's the other thing as well. I think um, her she's definitely singing about relationships, she is, but yeah. her, her brother 
uh, says he has no knowledge of her ever having a relationship. Right. And so I think it's inferred quite often in her story, either that oh, it's terrible because you can't speak as someone who can't defend themselves. But, the, you know, the, the roving woman has another uh, connotation, but also it's speculated that she might have, um, uh, she might have been gay. Yeah, yeah. I'm not so sure about that, actually. I, I sort of feel like she's singing about men in those songs, and I think she's making them slightly foolish, but that might be my modern ear. It does. I, I mean, I, I wasn't aware of that. It did sound to me like she's she's singing about men from the viewpoint of a woman who has known men in a yeah yeah yeah, yeah in a sexual yeah. way, possibly. Yeah, yeah. Um. Anyway, I can't. Uh, I can't recommend it highly enough. I find. It's just, it just makes you wonder how much stuff is hidden out there. Like, how many other things are there like this? How many other well, I mean, vanity artists? There this. always seems to be another one they can find. Yeah. We've talked about this before when we've, made, we've spoken about uh, Lawrence from Felt and Denim. And Who is, you know, oh. relatively known, but I suppose, but, but is, to some, but some way. Still an outsider, isn't he? Yeah, and, when, and because I mentioned when I watched the documentary about him, Lawrence of Belgravia, that there's there's someone like like him in every town, and uh, the same could yeah. kind of be said about Connie Converse, couldn't there? She's just another one that that great that great mass of uh, people who will who are very good at doing something, but will never be discovered for it. At least not yeah. in their own, their own lifetime. It's really hard, though, to sort of when you're listening to her and you're listening to these songs. It's like I say, I, I tire a little bit of the trope of ahead of their time. You know, yeah. I, I don't know how useful that is sometimes as a kind of like, yeah, but it's really hard to listen to this stuff. Yeah. And really properly put your head into the fact that. She, the year she moved out of Greenwich Village was the year Dylan moved in. Right. So as she's <laughs> moving out, saying, oh, oh, yeah, I can't, I, can't, I can't get anything to work with songs. You know, Dylan's her, like, so she exists in a world before Dylan and the Beatles and everything. So it's really hard to hear influences. There's a little yeah. sort of vaudeville musical thing going on there, but it's it, yeah. it's weird that it has such a relatively contemporary voice. There's some country sort of sounds as well, or like I mean, even like Roy Rogers. Yeah, and that sort of yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. There is. There's one song in particular where it's a kind of slight uh, country pastiche. Yeah. Anyway, what I'm drawing here. Uh, brings us to well i suppose well i suppose the end of the story is now isn't it the end of the story is 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 where we are now with it like knowing her but um yeah she disappears uh, so in 1974 she nice. uh, just disappears and really? she goes off in her volkswagen beetle and wow. no one knows what happens to her Wow. Um, yeah, they've got a line here from the letter. She wrote some letters to some friends and to her brothers, but the letter said she's seeking a new life. But her brother, for some reason, has a specific reason to think that she uh, drove the beetle into a body of water. Right. Um, but she wrote, uh, let me go. Let me be if I can. Let, be, let me not be if I can't. Human society fascinates me and awes me with grief and joy. I just can't find my place to plug into it. Mm. Yeah, that's so kind of final to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder why she went interested. They never found the car. 
<laughs> no, they never found the car. Um, it was in a, a brother has an interesting take on it. He, he and uh, the, the radio show that I, I will link. It's an hour, and it's it's really quick and, and, and undoubtedly better and more informative than what I'm doing here. But yeah. they talk to a brother in it, or they have some recordings of him. And he's kind of interesting. He talks about a missing person's right to remain uh, missing. Wow, that is interesting, that. And, that apparently there's, and apparently there's a legal right in that respect. You know, so right. that somebody, I think, the mother gets a private investigator to try and find Connie. And the private investigator says, look, if I find her, and then she says, I don't want anything to do with anyone, I don't, don't tell them, then I have to not tell you. Yeah. I wasn't aware of this. I don't know if it's American law or if it's a law here, but that you sort of have to respect someone's right to not be found. Yeah. 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 Um, so consequently there was one slight lead and someone was telling the brother, uh, about uh, you know a, a converse, and her actual name is Elizabeth Eaton Converse, by the way. That Con- right. I think she becomes Connie Converse because perhaps people just call her Connie because of the surname, and so then yeah. it becomes alliterated. But uh, there was one sort of hint of a lead, and I think the brother, because that letter was, as you say, so sort of clear in look, don't come looking for me, that he didn't. He was a little lead, and he went, no, look. But she doesn't want us. And so they didn't look at this lead. But I, I'm a little confused as to why from that he becomes very, because he's not like he's, it's not like he's just sure that she's committed suicide. He's sure that she drove into water. And I don't, couldn't right. quite find yeah, yeah. in my research what led him to believe that so strongly. Yeah. But he does, he, he seems quite unshakable in, in this idea. Um, here's a, here's here's a question for you though. One thing yeah. I was trying to research uh, before we came on here was they kept they they like this detail that is a VW Beetle. So I did my research yeah. and got a nineteen early nineteen seventies Beetle yeah. here to draw. But and obviously it's knowable. Obviously the brother knows, but he, I just can't find him telling us in any interview what color it was. So I don't know what colour ah. Connie's beetle is. So I suppose what I'm asking is, what colour do we want it to be? <laughs> I I thought you said yellow. I said you... yellow. I thought I said yellow to you. And then once I double checked, I couldn't find yellow. So whether or not I did read yellow, but when today I was trying to find it, I couldn't find it anyway. So I, I also also wondering whether I imagined it was yellow because who else drove a yellow Volkswagen Beetle in the early 70s? I don't know. Ted Bundy. <laughs> no. Yeah. He, oh, he, he, he did add this very distinctive kind of mustardy cream uh, Volkswagen. I wondered whether I kind of <laughs> poor Connie, but I wondered yeah. whether I actually got my memories was, um, of famous. Was he the guy who, who nearly gave um, Debbie Harry? Yeah, Debbie Harry, yeah. Debbie Harry oh. had a close call with uh, Ted Bundy. Yeah. Um. Well, well, well. Uh, have a, have a, uh, I haven't even finished. I've got a, I've got a few, uh, got a few more Connie Converse facts for you if you're interested. Well, I, am. Uh, I just wanted to. I, I, I listen when I listen to it. It's interesting because you said it's you know it's right up your street, and it's kind of quite definitely. I would have said it's it's not up my street, but I really enjoyed it. Um, you're right about the lyrics. Uh, very contemporary sounding. Like you said, it's had to say, oh, it's so modern. But it did sound modern. It, it sounded, um, yeah, it did. She was singing about things that um, women didn't sing about then, I don't think. 
No, I, I um, can imagine it being quite shocking, actually, if she, if she did play in a bar or whatever. I can imagine it being yeah. uh, quite it's shocking. A, just the, just about, that, just that very, the very first song, which still is my favourite, the first song on the album is just so clearly, uh, I, I don't need a man. And yeah. I, don't, I don't know, I can't think of... Uh, songs like that saying that i can think of people saying it i can think of someone like dorothy parker uh writing yeah. that sentiment but um still pretty ballsy well there's a song called uh, father neptune about singing about her her man her husband in the song um knowing that he loves the scene more than he loves uh loves her and um when he comes home He's just, she can see he's just waiting for the next time he can get in the boat and get out to sea. <laughs> uh, and her kind of accepting that. And it's um, kind of with a little bit of resignation. She wishes it wasn't the case, but she knows it is, and that's that's the way it goes. There's a great line that, um, I know it's the boat that keeps him afloat. And I love that that double meaning it's got in yeah. that line. It's Really, really clever use of words. Um, so yes, I did enjoy it, and I, I wasn't sure what I was going to think because um, it's got. At first, I was thinking, "Oh, is this a bit twee? Is it not me?" But once I got through, listened to a couple of songs, and started entering her world a bit, getting used to what she was what she was doing. Um, and then it was quite easy to, to just, um, enjoy well, it. Well, I mean, I mean, I mean, I think in a way it is twee, but then again, we have to sort of accept this is a world before you know, there were any twee songs. It's like, it's almost yeah. in a way being the first at anything you are, you are immune from any criticism. There is yeah. no criticism yeah. that, 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 that really sticks because, you can say, well, look, you know, what did I know? I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm the first person doing this stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I, I mean, I, I do understand that, and I'm sure if I cast my mind to it, I could do it. I'm sure that people could say that. Look, here is another songwriter before, but we, you get we, you get my point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One thing that, uh, uh, one thing I looked at as well is I looked to see. Uh, what might our uh, competition be on uh, YouTube for uh, videos about uh, Connie Converse? Right. Okay. Um, and I suppose, I mean, it's okay. It's understandable. And I actually had to stop listening to a co podcast. Uh, but a lot of the stuff on the internet starts to really focus on the disappearance so I would say yes, to people, yeah, yeah. be slightly wary of that because you can fall down a slightly kind of uh, true crime uh, wormhole on this one, yeah. uh, which, you know, I mean, I think the story of her disappearance is definitely interesting, but, I mean, it's not as interesting as the songs. You know? Yeah. Um, the other thing that I found interesting, which I don't know what I think about this, and I think I... I think I sort of don't like it actually, even though I, I know of one friend who's done this, but if you go onto YouTube, there's tons of covers. People right? really yeah. like covering her. And I remember this being sort of part of the Daniel Johnston ph phenomenon. Yeah. There's an album in the 90s. I can't remember the lady's name, but she did quite well with this album because she did this album, The Songs of Daniel Johnston. And I'm not sure what I think about that because I think there's a slight air of imagine if these songs had been done properly. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I sort of think, to me, Daniel Johnston's songs were, were done properly. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I understand what I obviously I understand, you know, what lo-fi means, and I understand why some people find that kind of sound hard to listen to. But you know, that's their problem. 
because I think like the thing about the thing I lo love about uh, Connie Converse is the the entire context of it. You know, so so those yeah, songs are, yeah, yeah. and and on this radio show um, that we'll link, they do have someone more contemporaneous singing one of the songs to illustrate it, and it's like, well, that's no, that's just not as good. It's yeah. immediately not as good. It's immediately not as interesting. And so, what I'm trying to say is the context of 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 Connie singing in this kitchen on a high stool. On one of them, one of them, she stops. And just go, oh yeah, Holden got that a bit wrong. You hear yeah. her chatting, like you say, just before the songs. You hear it. Yeah, there's one at, one at the, the end of one. She just says, Oh, to keep my guitar's gone all funny. Don't know why. That's guitar's gone funny. There's one where a cat starts meowing and she goes, Oh, that was perfect. You know, that's interesting as well. That she seems completely she doesn't seem weirded out or overly precious about the act of recording. No, uh, no. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, is all of that stuff isn't stuff you want to get rid of. I mean, that's, yeah. that's what makes yeah. it great. Um, and I, I sort of don't kind of like the idea that, isn't it a shame it was on better microphones? It's like, no, not really. Yeah. I think, I think, I think what it is, is what it is. There's an interesting bit. I think it was the last song on the album uh, where you can hear it's not, I don't think it's the animator. It's possibly the animator's girlfriend or wife says, uh, Connie's saying, well, I've got this song. I don't really know it properly yet. Oh, it's, it's the one, one where she's only got one verse and chorus, doesn't she? Yeah. And, and the other voice says, well, why don't you play it and we won't record it? And she says, okay. And they do record it. It's like you need to work in a radio studio, in a, a music studio. <laughs> <laughs> you know exactly what you're doing there. Yeah, we're not recording this one. Just have a run through. <laughs> I've even had it where the engineer said, look, just run through, guys. I'm not recording. And I've just gone, I know you are. It's the oldest trick yeah. in the book. I know, I know you are. <laughs> <laughs> the, a, I'll tell you what I find interesting about her. Well, I find I find the whole story interesting. A lot of it's interesting, but um, with if you kind of accept the fact that she probably gets called an outsider musician these days, um, which I think we've discussed before, is well, I know I know what you mean, and and you know what you mean, and people listening will know what you mean by that. But yeah. I do, but I do think that title has problems, you know. It does, in the same way that Outsider Artist has problems. Yeah. And one yeah. thing that's interesting is that the, this this label normally gets put on people who tend to have fairly, tend to struggle quite badly with mental health issues. Yeah. And it's interesting that she seems not to. Well... Um, well, no, I mean, I think she's I mean, very depressed. Towards the end, possibly, but, but, I, yeah. but I know what you mean. But she's 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 sharp as a yeah. They're uh, often. It's, I mean, you know, to, you get artists like Daniel Johnston, who's um, oh, I, 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 okay, yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, I mean, like, uh, uh, yeah, um, uh, Daniel Johnson uh, and Bob Tri. Do you know Bob Trimble? He's another. Uh, great, I, I really like Bob Trimble. We could do a separate one on him one time. No, Wesley Willis is another one. Um, Wesley Willis. But, but, yeah, I know what you mean. Sometimes yeah. the the outsider label imp it, 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 it implies a naivety. Oh, they're yes. brilliant because they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. Whereas, yes, you're right. With with um, Connie Converse, that can't be leveled at all. This is no, no. absolutely someone like who's mastering what they're doing. Yeah. Her job, um, a job when she, uh, just before she was just up until the, the, they moved the office and it apparently contributed to a depression. But her job was, she was, uh, working on off. She was partly editing the journal of conflict resolution. Oh, academic journal which is still in print today apparently the journal wow. of 
conflict resolution. Wow, that's heavy. It's heavy, but sounds really useful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could have done. I could have done with some of that. With, um, read it. Well, I mean, I could have done with it this week with stuff that's happening on on, <laughs> on my estate. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds like your allotment friend has already read it. That was yeah. I, 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 I thought that was kind of very astute. That thing. I said, "Why are you buying all this?" I said, "Because if I buy it, you can't." You, you can't give up. You, you, I'm guilting you into doing your allotment. But it's funny when someone pulls a trick on you and tells you they're pulling a trick on you, and yet yeah. still you can't get out of the trick. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's, um, that was very informative, Aaron. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, as I say, uh, I would actually in general, uh, avoid most of the uh, online podcasts and blogs I found. I didn't find any of them say much more than the wiki page, with the exception of this one radio show, which is actually, it's a radio show by the guy who originally got the songs brought into him. And then a few years later, he decides to do a proper one hour special on her. Right. And yeah, he has little, uh, he has, he has people in newer talking to him and, uh, it's just really tastefully done, and yeah. uh, and and you you get about or oh, at least six or seven of the songs, and you get bits of interviews of her. I would recommend that as a starting point for people. So there's more than one um, collection of songs on Spotify. Have you listened to any of the others? Yeah, no, I haven't, and I'm not entirely sure. There, there's, there's, I'm not entirely sure. They come from different places. So some of them come from this, uh, um, these recordings in Greenwich Village, where in in a kitchen, there mm. are. There's also she recorded what she called two albums sent to her brother, but I'm not sure how much of that was hung on to. And you're right. right. There is another album, but I haven't even checked the, the track listing of that. Also, no. somebody uh, found sheet music of piano songs with lyrics, and someone has re recorded that. So this is like right. music that there's no recordings from, but they do have a, a certain amount of it notated. Um, That's interesting. So that she did she notate that, or did did she get someone to notate? Yeah, that? I'm not. I, I, we, we've we've gone now a little bit beyond my knowledge. I mean, to be honest, I I hadn't heard of her four days ago. So this is all just just yeah, this week. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, so I, even though I'm slightly, um, even though I'm slightly uh, circumspect about lots of people covering it i think this this idea is a different kind of idea this is like well you know what have we got to, to work with here and so yes the idea, yeah 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 i mean it's like it's like people playing back concertos if the guy himself was around today you'd go watching him play the concertos yeah yeah but but all he's left all he left us with was the um the manuscripts so yeah. it's fine yeah Reminds me uh, a little of Beck, who released an album entirely in uh, manuscript form. Never recorded um, it. Never uh, recorded I, it. Just released I, it as a nice funny enough, I mean, I'm not saying I had this idea before Beck, or I have no idea about it, but I did think about that one, once as well. Yeah. I had I sort of had that idea that the way you used to once buy, you know, the first music format was sheet music. Yeah, and you could go and buy a song. And to be honest, that was still happening. I still seem. To, I remember in the eighties, you could go into a music shop, and they yeah. would have some cheap music of pop hits. They would still release. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I sort of had an idea of doing that. Um, yeah, that is a good idea. Yeah. It's. I mean, it's interesting actually that. Um. She was also doing what um, people did at the dawn of recording, and I think I've spoken to you to you about this off off camera recently about um, 
when record players first came out, I think they were possibly um, like the wax cylinders and stuff. Um, but the the machines that people could buy to to listen to at home also had a recording facility, kind of like ah, yes. Right? yes, yes, yeah. And the manufacturers were all in. Um, it's logical, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's fully logical. Like, like, oh, here's a thing you can buy music on, and here's a thing you can put music on. Yeah. yeah. But and it's the, only um, sort of later when you do you remember the, you know, obviously you do the home taping is killing music things, you know, when yes, they suddenly exactly, like, yeah, yeah. oh shit, we've well, done ourselves out of something here. Yeah. And this ties into it because the, um, the music publishers were often part of the same company as the record player manufacturers. And they realized that, um, by giving people the ability to record their own music, people weren't buying as many records as they wanted them to. So that recording facility... Um, the, one, of the record shops in my hometown, one of the record shops in my hometown did both. It sold stereos in one half. Yeah. And record players and very, and also sort of washing machines. And in the other side, it sold yeah. records. That you brought you yeah. the shop where you brought the thing to play the records on was also where you brought the records, which makes, makes sense, sense, doesn't it? I don't know why yeah. more more. I was going to say I don't know why more places don't do that now, but no one buys records anymore. But it's another it's another topic. But no yeah, so she records. was, you know, about um, so she was fifties. I would say about forty years, um, before Connie, people were recording themselves all over. All over America, easily. Yeah. So there may still be the odd, like really, really knackered acetate uh, of um, people's home recordings. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there, I mean, every house in the well, not every house, but a lot of houses in the world have attics, and there's all sorts of stuff lurking out there, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You look like you finished, though. I, I have. I'm, 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 I, I like what you've done there. I, 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 I've got it. And it sort of also made me wonder whether I'd never heard of that as a surname before, but presumably no. uh, so, someone, possibly, you know, with the surname Converse, made Converse shoes, right? Possibly, although it confuses me because Converse are also known as Chuck Taylors, aren't they? So, um, oh, yeah. If I'm not painting, I, I can I can do some some research. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm gonna guess. Well, was, there that, else, was there something else we weren't sure about? Wasn't there? There was something else I was gonna look at. Can't remember. Uh, but I'm gonna have a guess that maybe Chuck Taylor didn't make the shoes, but he was possibly like a baseball player who wore them. Uh, Going to be my totally ill-informed guess. Okay. Um. <laughs> oh right. Well. Okay, this is confusing because there are two. There's two wiki entries anyway. Oh. Converse is an American lifestyle brand that distributes and licenses footwear, apparel, and accessories. Founded in 1908. Jesus. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. As a Converse rubber shoe company, it has acquired, has been acquired by several companies before becoming a subsidiary subsidiary of Nike. Did you know that? Didn't no. Scan just go for a little bit. Converse's portfolio includes products under the Chuck Taylor All Stars, so it seems like that's a range. Yeah. Chuck Stay Chuck Taylor All Stars or Converse All Stars also refers to as Converse. Chuck Taylor's Chuck's Cons All Stars is a sneaker. Oh right, so that that kind of that's the one I've got. The I always thought they were called high tops, but they are called high top Chuck Taylors. Okay, yes. So but what we think of as the uh, the most famous Converse trainer is called a Chuck Taylor. That's right. Yeah. Hold on. So who's Chuck Taylor? Yeah, exactly. That's the thing I forgot to look at. Yeah. Um. Right. Uh, 
Oh, he's a basketball player. Basketball, I was... I mean, it's come- going to be one of the American sports, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. And so he asked for a better shoe. Because, I mean, I've got a pair. And I think every yeah, I is, is part, it's part of most people's wardrobe, isn't it? You've got to have a pair. But, God, I think you're an indie kid. Yeah. I think they're fucking uncomfortable. I never wear them anywhere <laughs> I've got to walk far. <laughs> I don't mind them. I like the look of them. I think they look great. I like the look of them. They're just one of those. They're just one of those things that sort of surpass trends or anything, aren't they? They are eternally yeah. a little bit trendy without being very trendy, aren't they? They're, they're yeah, eternally right. yeah. just okay, you know, like jeans, I suppose. I put them on. Put Ramon's t-shirt on. Um, down with the kids. Yeah, and you also yeah, look like, and and you also look like you're from no particular time, isn't it? I mean, you could say. Yeah. A drama at any point between 1978 and now, put someone in a Ramones t shirt, jeans, and Converse, yeah, and you wouldn't be exactly. able to tell where they were from, what time they were from. Is there anything else like that? So, Converse, I mean, jeans in themselves change kind of tailoring and change shape and stuff, but is there anything else that has always Ray Ban glasses, sunglasses? Have they always been the same and always trendy? Yeah, possibly. Yeah. Um, you mentioned jeans. I think five or ones maybe have always stayed the same. Yeah. Um, there's there's certain clothing that it just. I don't the Fred Perry t-shirt like has always kind of. Yeah, know. yeah. A lot of the mud stuff, Fred Perry, and the the um, G yeah. two Harrington jacket. But also, well. they they well the Harrington not so much, but I think the Fred Perry exists outside mod stuff, right? All yeah. sorts of people that be seen with um, a Fred Perry logo on them. Yeah, so some. But, some but I think the Harrington jacket is more, more of a strict uniform, right? It is, yeah. It is. Well, I've uh, I've done drawing this for for the video. <laughs> it's great. I'm going to finish it. I'm going to do a outline. Um. May I do that on my computer to get some proper circles. Great, going, I don't know. But yeah, Great. That I think, really I think that, that yours should definitely be the uh, title frame of the video. That's that. That's okay. Yeah. All right. Okay then. Lovely talking to you, Darren. Next and time. You too. Next time on 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 uh, Brentwood Tuxedo. I believe after me educating you about Connie Converse, you're going to educate me on Steve Vai. Steve Vai, rock and roll. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye, Darren. Bye, Darren. <laughs>